Hey everybody, Jay Krista, Say I Do Forever on our book Friday. And uh, this is a uh, interesting chapter on men are like waffles, women are like spaghetti. And uh, we're going over chapter five, waffles and spaghetti in the bedroom. But we figured out a way to do this because it's yeah. been three weeks that we tried yep. to figure out how to do this chapter because and it's important. And the topics that we're going to cover is a precursor to this chapter. So, if you guys uh, want to buckle up and get yes. ready. Yes, we're talking today about things that are hard to talk about. We're talking about <laughs> difficult conversations that you have to have with your spouse. And every single couple has something that is a difficult conversation, whether that be um, intimacy in the bedroom, whether it's hard or easy for you to talk about that. Um, some other things might be uh, finances. Some couples cannot talk about finances without fireworks happening. Right. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, maybe a job, like a sensitive subject about a job. Or the lack of a job. Yeah, or, or what about in-laws? Or, or communication. Yeah. Communication is a big deal on this one today. Yeah. It's and a big deal. What about, I was trying to think, um, some couples, you know, you bring baggage to, uh, you kind of bring baggage to your marriage. It's just how it is. You do your best not to, but you might have some past hurts and some uh, things that you've kind of buried in your past and maybe for you that's really hard to talk about so that's a difficult yeah, conversation. Past, past relationships um, mm -hmm. just whatever I mean you're you're bringing in a lot to the relationship before you met your spouse I mean I brought a lot to my relationship with Krista she brought a lot to her relationship with me so in over the last 35 years we were able to work through a lot of it um, it's still a work in progress but mm -hmm. it's it's been good but every couple has those areas and yep. why are some conversations so hard where other conversations you have no problem talking about and sometimes some couples have no problem talking about intimacy but they cannot talk about finances some couples uh, have no problem talking about finances but they can't talk about the in-laws or about past and a, a lot of couples too you'll have one that's passive mm -hmm. and you'll have one that's an extrovert and uh, the passive person all they want to do is have peace all they want to do is wave the white flag and just be neutral like Switzerland and not mm -hmm. not have that conflict because they maybe grew up in a home that had a lot of conflict and battles and they just it stressed them out so they don't want to deal with that. So even the the fact of having a conversation is almost too much for them. It, it may be leaning towards a crisis conversation, according to them. <laughs> yeah. So, so it could be the way that they were raised. These are some different... Um, yep. And you and your spouse might be completely different on what conversations are hard to cover and what conversations are easy. Uh, for yeah. Jay and I, I grew up in a household that did not talk about sex or intimacy at all or any of that type of thing. And so that is a very closed subject with me. You grew up in a home that was very open about that kind of thing. Right. To the point where um, our children, Jay discussed the birds and the bees right over dinner conversation with our children. Well, you have to, you know, you have to have the conversation. <laughs> And I was, like, was like, probably, <laughs> probably not over dinner though, you know, but that's okay. Yeah. We made so, it through it. So it might be the way you're raised, um, you know, and what your family, what they were willing to talk about and what they were maybe not willing to talk about. Um, it also might be whether you have a past hurt or your spouse has a past hurt in an area. They might be really, really sensitive if they have a past hurt in a certain area. Yeah. Um, talks sure. about intimacy and the bedroom are very difficult for some people who have some past hurt. Um, yeah. You know, maybe they've got, you know, some situations where they were in an abusive relationship or something like that. And yes. that is very hard. So you've got to be very sensitive to that. Um, it might be different personality types too. An introvert might not be 
um, really comfortable with talking about a lot of things. Then there's some introverts that want to talk deeply about, uh, you know, inside things. <laughs> yeah, some, some, some spouses want to pull those feelings out of the other spouse, and the other spouse doesn't want to talk yeah. about feelings because they were told, you know, you don't cry, you don't show an emotion, you don't do this, you don't do that, and then it makes it more difficult mm -hmm. for the one that wants to know more about their spouse. You know, let's open up, let's talk about this, and they're like, no, I don't want no. to, I don't want to go that direction, you know. Um, some of them were probably raised that way, you know, and don't want to have anything to do with any of that conversation. So I, I know it's difficult in some relationships. Yeah. Some couples are going to, they're going to have the struggles. And if a couple has been married for a long time, it could be that they've been hurt or feel misunderstood by the other couple in that area. They feel like yep. we've gone down this road. We've had this conversation and it doesn't go well. And I don't want to, I don't want to go down that road anymore. Well, and I'm sure there's going to be couples too that are going to be like, we don't talk about money. We don't talk about money. We have separate accounts. We don't bring it up. It's mm -hmm. not a discussion. And I mean, it's sad because there's got to be neutral ground where you can have that conversation and let each other know what on, what's on each other's hearts. You know, this is how I feel about finances. Well, this is how she feels about finances. And there's got to be some compromise. It can't just be all one-sided all the time from both because then you don't have compromise. Then it's World War Three, and you're bitter, you're angry, you're in a mm -hmm. bad relationship, you know, you're just always grumpy all the time, you're walking around with a chip on your shoulder, and it's not healthy. It's not healthy for life, and it's not healthy for a marriage. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing, is having compromise. Let's talk about tips to have better conversations uh, for those difficult things. And one, you just said compromise. Um, that is a really good one. So number one, be willing to compromise. Don't um, just take your own um, own way right. on things. Number two would be to be sensitive. Yeah. If you know that your spouse is kind of closed lip on a certain subject or has a really hard time, be really sensitive to why. Find out maybe why um, they are having that problem. Try to come up with um, some way that you can understand them a little bit better. Yeah, if if you give them the whole line of, oh, it's just in your head, well, <laughs> they'll never open up again. Either that or it'll take them a long time to open up. Mm -hmm. You have to be sensitive. Yeah, so be sure. sensitive. Try not to analyze them or compare them to other people, um, but try to be really, really sensitive. Yep. Um, number three is to choose the right time. That is critical because you don't want to have been thinking about a conversation you want to have all day long and the moment they walk in the door, you jump on them. Like, we got to have this conversation. Yeah, we need to talk about finances. <laughs> Especially if they had a hard yeah. day at work. You don't know where they just came from or what issue or argument or the stress that they just came from from work. Mm -hmm. They may not be in the mood to talk about finances. They may not be in the mood to communicate at all, especially right when they walk through the front door. Well, and also some people are morning people. Some mm -hmm. people are evening people. Yep. Um, one of our little things was when I was running the business, Saturdays were the height of nervous mornings because yep. Everything for my whole week kind of rided on all road. of road. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, road on um, the appointments that were going to happen that day. And I also had to have a early morning meeting with all of my girls, which yeah. usually uh, for my employees. And usually they there was some issue that I had to cover. Um, I had to do training on that morning. And so Jay, on the other hand, would be off on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And so he would wake up feeling refreshed and the whole week is behind him. And he wanted to have these deep conversations on Saturday morning. From one to 10 and I wanted to run through it before she left for work. And all that did is stress her out and put her mm -hmm. in a frenzy right before she needed a calm before she went and had a huge day at her shop. So that was something that I needed to learn to 
curtail and not bombard her with 20 questions <laughs> before she walked out the door where she's showing up at her shop going, ah, I'm just, you know, I'm in a tizzy now because Jay asked me 20 questions before I walked out the door. Mm -hmm. So you got to pick your, your timing has to be right. Yeah. You can't just bombard your I'm trying spouse. to think of some other areas, you know, um, if they are a morning person, maybe they're not a right away in the morning person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great concept. <laughs> yeah. They're a morning person, but they're not a right of right in the way. Let them have some coffee first. A right a wave person. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Uh, finding a time to That's talk funny. about those things, you know, in the you know when you both are relaxed and you both For have sure. some kind of intimate time to be quiet together and um, to talk softly yeah. and not hurriedly. Um, you don't want yeah. to get your agenda out right before you're about to go to a birthday party for a family member or something like that. You'll just go to that thing in a fight. Yeah, it's not going to be good. <laughs> so choose, um, which was number three, choose the right time. So number four is choose your words carefully. So that's part of being sensitive. It's that this spouse is a little more sensitive. Um, you, you tend to be a little bit more sensitive in the financial part. And so if I hit him with too many things that we need to accomplish in our financial world, it will throw him into a, a tailspin really, really fast. Um, you know, and same with if you were to come to me and suddenly want to solve all of any issues we have in intimacy in the bedroom, and it's just at the bad time or something, that's gonna be, so know your spouse, know mm -hmm. what their strong points are, know when is a good time, know what words you could use to be a little softer and not, don't accuse. Don't say you always do this and you don't do this. Yeah, pointed questions at your spouse has got to be the worst thing you can yeah. do. You, you want to really get people uptight, start pointing the finger at your spouse. It's not a good thing. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Use I statements. Yeah. So instead of like, you never do this or you need to do this, say, I feel unloved when you do this or whatever. You know, I need to feel more loved, so can we, or I need to feel more secure in our finances when, you know, can you do this? Or I feel that when I am trying to have a serious conversation that it's not coming across to you as it's important. You know, um, you, you've got to get your spouse on the same page mm -hmm. in a loving way, not in a demanding way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And one thing we were talking about on this is how intimacy is kind of, especially intimacy in the bedroom, but intimacy is a bigger word than just um, sexual intimacy. Intimacy is in conversation, it's in um, trusting each other, it's in, um, intimacy is so much bigger than just in the bedroom. But your intimacy and your level of intimacy and how well that is, is a fruit of the other areas of your life. Or it's the, um, how do we say it, like the evidence of or the end result of. Mm -hmm. So if you are struggling in the bedroom, if you're struggling in your conversations or having intimacy in other areas, there is probably an underlying root somewhere else. You can't um, be say belittling people or give or um, yeah. making them feel insecure or um, you know making them do all the work around the house or I don't know there's a hundred different problems in marriage in a nutshell you can't treat your spouse like garbage and then go turn to them and say let's go have some loving it, it doesn't work that way it does not work that way. All you do is make them even more bitter towards you and mm -hmm. more animosity towards you and anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's when couples just give up and they yeah. lose hope in their relationship is because somebody isn't listening or both aren't listening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
you can't expect the good stuff if you're not willing to put in the work to get to that point of intimacy. Yeah, you've got to have good conversation. You've got to be treating your spouse with respect and yep. honor. You've got to be um, just uplifting them throughout the week so that when there is time in the bedroom, then they feel loved and treasured and not misunderstood. Um, and that will, basically it is the fruit of the rest of your marriage. Yep. So you had said something that intimacy starts with good communication skills. Yeah. That's if, huge. And like I had just previously said, mm -hmm. if you want to have good intimacy with your spouse, the loving intimacy, then you need to not only be a good communicator verbally speaking to them, but you need to be a good communicate, communicator, gee whiz, mm -hmm. listening. You need to hear what they're saying and hear what they're meaning, not just assume you know what they're going to say and, and just slough it off, brush it off, just be like, yeah, whatever, you always say that. No, that's not how, that's not how you do things. It's not. Mm -hmm. You've got to be aware of how they're feeling, where they're coming from, what they're trying to tell you. Because if you get on their page it's going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to make your marriage a lot stronger, a lot better, a lot smoother than you just saying, yeah, well, you always say that. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. You keep telling your spouse it doesn't matter. He or she is going to show you how much it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So communication is key. Yeah. It, it embraces everything else in the relationship. So it really if, does. If you're struggling in some of those really key, hard um, communication areas, those difficult conversations, number one, look and see if there's some other area of your marriage that you're not being respectful or that you're hurting your spouse because maybe that's coming out in that. Mm -hmm. Or also, and also, um, make sure that you're learning how to have good communication about that. You can sit down and have a discussion about intimacy in the bedroom. You can sit down and have a discussion about um, finances and how you guys are going to overcome you know, a hurdle. You can have these really hard conversations about their past, but you have to have good skills. You've got to be sensitive. You've got to listen to them. You've got to not judge and put a label on them. You've got to just open up and just find out who your spouse is. So here's a, here's a question you can ask your spouse. Um, whether you're the husband or the wife or whatever, ask them this. What is it that I do that you feel belittles you? Ask the question. Mm -hmm. If you want to really know what really just gives them almost like steam out of their, you know, just to set them off, ask them, what is it that I do that you feel has a tendency to belittle you? Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's another Get question. an answer. Get an answer from them. That way you don't do it anymore because maybe they're going to hold it inside and they're going to bottle it up and not tell you. And then you're going to wonder why they're so cranky all the time. Well, it's probably because you're belittling, belittling them and you don't even realize it, or maybe you do realize it and don't care. Yeah. And another thing, just in case everything is good in that area, what is their biggest fear? And that could be in the bedroom. What's your biggest fear? What's, you know, what's your biggest struggle? Um, that could also be at finances. What's your biggest fear in finances? Mm -hmm. As we're talking about this, why are you getting so defensive? And it always, and it always will be like, or it possibly could be, I should rephrase that, possibly could be like an underlying issue, like what she's saying. Mm -hmm. You know, fear about something, whether it's finances or the romance in the bedroom or, you know, job or whatever, kids. Mm -hmm. There's fear somewhere under there. It could be fear. 
So, it I mean, there's lots be, of variables. It, it could be a medical condition, a, yep. a medical uncomfort. It could be something medical that you need to address together as yep. a couple and love each other through. Yep. So you need to find out, you know, don't just be like, well, we, you know, we don't have a good time in the bedroom, so our whole marriage is over. Yeah, that's no, not you true. you need to stop and think, what can we do to have a better conversation about yep. it? What can we do to understand each other? Yep. What can we do to um, just take our marriage to the next level of, of an intimacy of love? Yeah. Not just an act. Yeah. You know, divorce is usually within the five or ten years of a marriage, and you guys can get past that. Any of you that have been married mm -hmm. from yesterday till ten years, you guys can overcome that statistic. You can apply the things that we just told you about. Um, if you guys can build on your communication skills, you will have a much better chance from 10 years on and stay married mm -hmm. rather than throw up your hands and say, oh, I give up. This is too hard. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's not too hard. Mm -hmm. And you know? even if you've become strangers, you might be in a marriage right now where you feel like you are, a you are strangers. You're just kind of coming and going you can turn that around and fall back in love. You can turn that around and become intimate um, with conversation again, intimate with every area of your life. So there's, there's hope. It goes back to the saying that I always say, and I will always say it, marriage is like a roller coaster. You're gonna have your ups, you're gonna have your downs, but don't mistake the downs as the end of the ride because if you stick with your relationship, your marriage, you're gonna have ups again. It's just how it is. Krista and I have been together 35 years. I met her my junior year in high school. We started dating then, 35 years ago, and we're still together. We realize marriage is like a roller coaster. We're there's gonna have a, our ups and downs. There's been a lot of downs, but then there's been a exactly. lot of ups. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The ups outnumber the downs. The, the longer we are together, there's less downs and more up. We stay up a little bit more. Uh, at the beginning, it was probably down, up, down, up, down, up, you know, really, really fast. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, uh, one one week it was this and one week it was that. And, and, and that was towards the beginning of our relationship, I'd say from day one till about 10 years into it. And then after that, it started mm -hmm. to get better and it's way better now than it ever has been. Yeah. You know, our priorities have completely changed in mm -hmm. our relationship. Where we wanted to be at the beginning of 35 years ago compared to where we're at now, completely different. Yeah. Our goals, our, our dreams, our hopes, everything is different now. And I like where we're at now. Yeah. You know? My dad, I think, said it really perfectly in the interview we did last mm -hmm. week with them. And that was that um, the love becomes more like uh, warm embers where it's not passionate and hot but it's just a love that is warm and crackling embers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's It just stays nice. It's cozy. It's cozy. It's, it's comfortable. <laughs> exactly. It's but comfortable. don't get too comfortable. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Oh, but boy. anyway, this video, we are so glad we did this video. Yeah. It was three weeks we thought about how we are going to do chapter five waffles and spaghetti in the bedroom from our book um, men are like waffles women are like spaghetti and by the way uh, next week we'll be going on to chapter six and we have three different books here <laughs> they're all the same book so this so they're just updated whether you got one on the internet and it was used and you have any of those three um it doesn't really matter. They're all the same book on the inside. Yep. And um, it's been a really good book on finding out the differences between men and women. And you can always learn something no matter how long you've been married. Yep. We're always learning. something new. We're always learning something new. Yep. I can't remember what it was the other day. Krista said she liked such and such. I don't know if it was something like food or what. And <laughs> You were like, what? And she, I think it, it was... Just, the drawing that I wanted to do. The, That's what it was. It was the, the brush she, stroke. She's always wanted to um, do lettering, uh, fancy lettering. And so <laughs> like we, were at, we were at the bookstore and I'm like, really? I have no idea. 
Yeah. So you will always learn something There's new. There's always something that you're going to find out. Yeah. yeah. So happy Friday. Happy Friday. And happy Book Friday. We'll see you next Friday for our Book Friday. And this week we're back on track. Happy 2022. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. We love you guys so much. And this is Jay and Krista. We're helping you say I do forever. Helping you say I do forever. <laughs> love you guys so much. See you guys. Bye.